Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for September 25th, 2024. Well, I hunted down those little computer gremlins that were causing me problems yesterday and banished them to, um, well, cyber heaven or something, wherever they go. But finally um, got that taken care of. We should have a, a video this morning that is as normal. So how about we take a look at what happened overnight? First off, Asian markets, um, interestingly enough, the, the Shanghai, the China stimulus that they promoted, well, it's not having an ongoing effect. Um, at the moment. It did help China, however, up 1.16% and Hong Kong up 0.68%. Um, India was up um, just slightly at 0.25%, but unfortunately the Nikkei moving lower uh, down 0.19% and Australia down 0.19% after making their rate decision in Australia. If we take a look at European markets this morning, we have a little bit of a mix. We have the DAX down 0.41%, the FTSE being up 0.28%, and the CAC also down 0.33%. US futures this morning, well, they were down across the board first thing this morning, but we've got the pre-market pump going on in the diamonds and now uh, the diamonds is showing a little bit of a gain up 0.03 percent nasdaq futures down 0.09 and uh, excuse me s p 500 futures down 0.09 percent and nasdaq futures down 0.25 percent if we take a look at our uh, bonds here this morning well our bonds um, still kind of floating around in here. Whoops, just a second. I have correct link. There we go. Um, the two-year bonds at 3.53%, the 10-year bonds at 3.75%, and the 30-year bonds at 4.10%. So keeping an eye on that, we've got those bonds just um, moving up a little bit here today. If we take a look at oil, oil had a pretty good day yesterday if we take a look at um, oih had a nice little pop and run up um, ended up leaving behind um, well that would be a hanging man pattern possibly at a top and this morning we're seeing oil pulling back kind of an interesting move here on oil and if we take a look at um, oil producers in here they ended up with a good strong surge in the morning and then faded back um, all day long to leave a little bit of a dark cloud cover here right at price resistance. Right now we have oil down um, just slightly down to 0.70%, 50 cents at 7106 a barrel. Brent is down 48 cents at 49, uh, excuse me, 74, um, 73 a barrel. And natural gas is showing a little bit of bullishness. And natural gas just kind of struggled in there, resting yesterday after this big strong run to the upside, still trying to test this resistance in the chart. So keep an eye on natural gas. Boy, the big mover yesterday. It had quite a little bit of whipsawing around, but take a look at gold. GLD, man, big strong move over 30 points yesterday to the upside. Right now, gold is up $2.50 an ounce at $2,679 an ounce, looking like it is headed toward that $3,000 level that Morgan Stanley said was a likely possibility. Any rest or pullback in here, I sure wouldn't want to chase this, but any rest or pullback, I'd be looking for an opportunity. We also saw silver strongly higher yesterday. It is pulling back today. Uh, copper was also higher. We got a little pullback going on in copper this morning. Platinum was higher. It's pulling back and palladium pulling back as well here this morning after a nice bounce yesterday. If we take a look at the crypto markets here, 
crypto markets had a pretty good day yesterday running to the upside but now we're pretty much right across the board here um, with BITO as you can see pulling back here just a little bit still in that consolidation pattern however but down $376 a coin on Bitcoin Ether is also down Litecoin is down so pretty much a uh, bearish start to the day and one of the reasons that might be the case is is what we're seeing here in the US dollar. US dollar showing quite a bit of weakness, but if you'll notice here between our bid ask, looks like we're, our dollar may be popping to the upside here this morning, at least at the moment. That's creating those moves in those precious metals and cryptos, so watch that carefully. So what does all that mean for the day? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for the day. And remember everyone, we want to look at these uh, charts for what they are, not for what we want them to be, and shake off that bias. Well first off here, we have a very, very bullish chart here. The Diamonds new record highs yesterday and you can see in the pre-market right now they're trying to pump it. Um, so possibility of a new record high at the open here today. The other thing that you uh, might notice here is really what we're doing is we are in a consolidating pattern. We're uh, building this little resting area here in the market and that's actually pretty common. It's common just simply because we're waiting. We have the uncertainties um, coming forward here of the GDP number, a Jerome Powell comment coming up. We've got uh, uh, those uh, durable orders and things like that that are, that are coming in uh, data uh, later this week along with a core PCE number. And uh, market is maybe just hesitating a little bit. And take that um, off the table and we still have that hurry up and wait idea for the next quarter earnings and maybe a bit of uncertainty about how those might come out. So keep an eye on that as the Dow uh, may drift on sideways here. But if the bulls can continue to find inspiration, well, let's look right in here. Breaking through up here, we've got all time highs um, in the diamonds and certainly a possibility that that could occur. If the bears were to find inspiration today, then that possibility that we would push back, retest that support of this consolidating area certainly seems like every possibility like that could occur as well. And that would test this upside trend, as you can see, this longer term upside trend that I've got drawn in there. We had obviously had quite a little bit of volatility in there um, off those bottoms, but holding up pretty well overall. Now, if the bears were to push any further than that, um, I'm going to suggest we come down and we test this trend area or maybe even come down to test this price support area in the chart. And you can see I've got this other upside trend in here that could provide a little bit of support in that area of the chart. Beyond that point, I think a little bit of fear might come into the market. We'll have to watch if um, that occurs because things could change pretty quickly from this um, pretty overbought situation here in the market. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY, also in that consolidating pattern, and if those bulls find inspiration here today, every reason to believe they could break out of the top of this box in here and push on higher. And you can see what we're really doing is just consolidating in this, and I think that is a very healthy thing for the market to do after such a stretch to the upside. Um, if the bulls find that inspiration, blue skies above, well, easy to see that and a new record high close yesterday as well uh, just by a tick or two if um, we um, have those bears have anything to say and they push back down well I would suggest maybe a retest of that lower side 
of that uh, consolidating zone would be possible. And then a push beyond that would probably take us down into this really strong area of price support of the chart, somewhere between here and here and that upside trend. So um, no particular worries there on the SPY in a pullback because we would still, at that point, have that 50-day moving average under us and a pretty strong price action area in the chart there on the SPY. If we take a look at our QQQ, now QQQ also in that consolidating move, also squeezed up right at the end of the day trying to break through that little consolidating zone here in that chart. So keep an eye on that. There's our little box around that. If the bulls find inspiration, we'll pop on through here. Remember, popping through there, we're trying to break this area of resistance. Then I would be looking for that next area above for us to be testing. And you can see popping through here, we're likely to come on up check out this area of the chart and then maybe even work to see if we can fill that gap right up here to this area of resistance in the chart. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration while well, just testing the bottom side of that would be a test down here on this little price support area. Every reason to believe that could occur and that wouldn't change anything here. It's still a very bullish pattern. If the bears push beyond that, start coming down, testing some of these additional areas. Um, I wouldn't be too terribly worried with that unless we really started pushing through down toward this area. That would raise a little bit of concern. And at that point in time, we'd be back down here testing our 50-day moving average. So watch carefully for that possibility as well. And then if we look at our IWM, Russell continues to pull back here, but this, this is not a bearish pattern. This is a nice little resting consolidation in IWM. And that resting pattern in here, as long as it holds this price support, I think there is um, every reason to believe that this could find that bullish inspiration here and start pushing back up to retest some of these levels here in the chart. And um, that's a healthy pullback, I think, right now in IWM. And a pushback up into here, testing that resistance would be um, a very likely occurrence. And if we were to break through that area, then we start working our way up here to this bigger area in the chart, which pulls um, a pretty big level of price resistance out of this chart from 2021 into 2022. And then if the bears were to find inspiration, well, I think it's pretty easy to see here. A push down below there would be maybe a little bit of a concern for the market. But I don't think it's terrible if it were to push back into there. Notice we've got some price support um, areas right in this area. We've got this downtrend break that could still hold us. And of course, this upside trend in here that could still hold us right in this zone. And I don't think that would be a horrible thing in retesting the 50-day moving average um, as a support level. Um, let's take a look at our VIX. Now, our VIX um, yesterday, we were going up and then all of a sudden we had a shot to the um, um, push to back to the downside as the market surged just all of a sudden out of nowhere. There was no news surged to the upside. And as you can see, we're pushing closer and closer to this little price support area here in the chart. So if those bulls can continue to find inspiration and push on down, test this price support, that's where um, um, we would um, run that possibility of a real surge to the upside, breaking this down and pushing us into this next level of the VIX, uh, getting us back down into these 12s and um, 11 areas of uh, the VIX. Now, keeping in mind, as we continue to try and press this area here, well, we're still working into this downtrending wedge here in the chart. And if the bears were to find any kind of inspiration and bounce up through here, that's where some concern would come in, particularly if we broke back above that resistance in the chart. And then, of course, holding any kind of a higher low in here 
raises that concern that we may start running to the upside. As I mentioned over here, we started to hold these higher lows. Watch out. That's where the real selling comes into play. So let's take a look at our T20s. Our T2122 continues to be extremely overbought. And that's why I continue to say we're, we're in a danger zone here of that potential pullback. If you remember over here, I, I said we can linger here. We can continue to linger here for a period of time. But we will always find a way to pull this back. We cannot continuously go up in the market. Um, everyone needs that relief, that profit-taking wave to come into the market to relieve that pressure to provide some uh, good buying opportunities in charts. And as you can see, we continue to linger up here. We still have that upside opportunity if we just a little bit of upside opportunity if the bulls can find inspiration but notice right in here in this chart pattern that we've got here this is a little bit of a hook right here i call that a hockey stick in the air hockey stick in the air it's called high sticking you go to the penalty box so be watching for the possibility i'm not going to suggest that i know the date and time when this is going to pull back I just know that it's coming and what we need to be doing is we need to be paying attention to that thinking carefully about it not chasing already extended stocks and be thinking about raising stop losses to protect ourselves in case this does find that inspiration point that pushes us back down so keep a close eye on that if you start to see that hint of that pullback Make sure you're prepared with a plan to protect yourself and take some of those profits that you have here in the market. If we take a look at our uh, T2108, now T2108 was able to squeeze just a little bit higher. We did um, this move yesterday on very low volume, squeezing back up. But the good news in here, if you look across here, we held this price support. Bulls are still in control, clearly still in control. And that possibility that we could stretch on up here toward that 70 area and test this resistance area in the chart. Remember in the T2108, when we reach up there into that mid 70s area or just above, we are in a uh, an uber extreme extension of the market and watch for something to break. Watch for that potential pullback to occur if we were to stretch up that far. So watch carefully. If we look at our T2107, and now T2107 just made a little tiny effort to push up there yesterday. So um, not looking bad here at all. Um, in fact, looking very good holding on to support levels and that opportunity that we could push on up and retest some of the resistance levels up here in the chart if those bulls can find inspiration to do so. Now, I will continue to remind everyone, mid-65 areas are that extreme area here in T2107 where we will typically find some kind of pullback in the market. If we take a look at our uh, T2101, this is one of the problems that we're going to be dealing with because we're heading in to the next round of earnings we are in the blackout period and remember earnings don't begin on the first day of the quarter it's going to be about a week and a half or so into the next quarter before we're going a week or so we'll start those big bank reports so keeping in mind we still have a couple of weeks where we're likely to see breadth continuing to climb as more and more stocks fall into their blackout period and um, that choppy condition in the market um, continues to uh, potentially grow. So watch carefully for that possibility. It doesn't mean we have to go down in the market at all. We can rest our T2122 back just simply by doing a healthy consolidation here in the market, relieving some of that upside pressure and um, and as this breadth falls, that's a pretty common thing to be watching for. So keep an eye on that. If we take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today, well, our economic calendar, we clearly have a few things to be paying attention to here today. Fixed up here so you can see the whole calendar. 
there we go um, and as you can see here we've got uh, this morning we're going to get mortgage applications we've got new home sales that will be coming out today um, they're looking for those new home sales to decline by consensus uh, down to 700 from 739 not a terrible pullback we're going to get petroleum status um, some more treasury buyback activity in here and of course some bond auctions and then as we move uh, uh, through the end of the day we're going to get some fed speak in there so keep that in mind now remember if if you paid attention yesterday that consumer confidence number that fall there was the biggest drop in consumers confidence in three years and somehow we managed to find bullish energy to push through but remember we see uh, when we get 50 basis point rate cuts it means that the fed is worried something is wrong with the economy and we may have something wrong with the economy on those weakening consumers so watch that closely as we progress over here into thursday we have some big reports coming we've got those durable goods orders market mover of course a gdp number market mover and then those jobless claims that are always a potential market mover. Beyond that, we're gonna have corporate profit numbers. We've got uh, Collins, Bauman, Jerome Powell, and William speaking on, um, on Thursday, pending home sales, natural gas numbers. Um, so we've got a pretty busy day coming into Thursday and then Friday we have to remember those core PCE numbers. So there is a reason why the market is acting a little bit uncertain here and um, we should respect that and pay attention to that. If we happen to stumble from where we are, this lofty area from where we are on any of these reports, be prepared for a plan to protect yourself. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar here today. And our earnings calendar, we have a few notable, notable reports to be paying attention to. Um, CTAS um, reporting this morning. Looks like we're getting a little attempt to boost here in the pre-market on that, but a little pullback coming into play there on CentOS. It's been in a beautiful upside trend, so keep an eye on that. And then after the bell, we have um, a pretty important notable. We're going to hear from Micron. Keep an eye on Micron in here. It's trying to put in a little W formation here in the chart. Watch that carefully for this afternoon after the bell. We have CNXC that we'll be reporting. We've got FB Fuller. We're going to hear from Jeffries. And we've got Worthington Steel that we'll be reporting. Um, and we'll talk, we might talk a little bit about this in just a little bit in Worthington Steel. So let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be helpful to your day, um, if you could do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I know it gets monotonous doing this every single day, but it does, um, it does help in the support of the effort that it takes to put these uh, videos out every day as well. So thank you everyone who does take the time to do that. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. Remember everyone, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful. And remember that you should follow your trading rules and your guidelines. Never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas well first off let's take a look at steel i uh, mentioned that the ws now i wouldn't be trading this ahead of its earnings report but what i want you to notice in here is this very bullish pattern that we have in these charts um worthington there's that inverted head and shoulders pattern 
popping nicely yesterday as the dollar falls watch some of these steel companies they are really coming around take a look at cleveland cliffs coming up off of this bottom showing bullishness here in the market trying to break that downtrend uh, steel dynamics making that nice run up here to test this bigger downtrend to see whether or not it can push up and you can see we've got the first two-thirds of a potential inverted head and shoulders pattern starting to show there things like uh, new core also coming up out of that bottom um, u.s steel coming up out of that bottom so keep an eye on some of these steel stocks um, mt making that move and i'm going to continue to talk about that possibility as we cut rates for a weakening dollar here in the united states we want to be watching closely things like um, those hard assets like soybeans pulling back here um, um, after a big pop yesterday pulling back this morning um, coming into some support there's our upside trend and here's our potential head and shoulders pattern in here that could be setting up so watch this resting pullback in here for that opportunity in soybeans take a look at cane sugar my goodness sugar just went like a rocket ship ride any rest or pullback in here could set up um, an opportunity in cane take a look at wheat wheat also coming up out of that bottom you can see that same pattern starting to form on a lot of these hard asset type um, stocks so watch that carefully breaking through this resistance and holding look for that potential opportunity that that could start up and even things like corn um, showing uh, some bullishness here coming off of a bottom breaking through some resistance holding you can see it popped yesterday through this resistance this rest or pullback here today could set up that next opportunity along this trend so watch that carefully in corn now when we talk about hard assets we have to talk about these precious metals and uh, my goodness what a move um, silver had yesterday it just stretched and stretched and stretched to the upside now um, when we get those big stretches you sometimes want to be watching closely for that potential pullback to occur at any time and i would suggest that could be the case here today pushing up here into these resistance levels in the chart notice a breakout up here that could be really significant in silver so we've got this nice upside move going here a little resting pullback starting to happen this morning watch for that next opportunity in silver if the dollar continues to weaken and we know that is in a fed rate cutting cycle the dollar typically weakens so watch carefully for things like silver take a look at copper copper having um a whopper of a move yesterday here on freeport big gapping move to the upside really strong pop on copper so any rest consolidation pull back in here i would watch for that next opportunity you can see we broke through this resistance in here so rest back and proof to hold that area in here and then i would look for that next opportunity to the upside there in fcx um, take a look at copx if you wanted to uh, pick up the copper miner etf big strong move in there as well breaking through resistance levels here in the chart as you can see now rest consolidate here a little bit and look for that next opportunity in following that chart higher as well then um, take a look at things like uh, palladium palladium has had a amazing move here recently to the upside breaking this uh, longer term downtrend in here pushing strongly to the upside i think any kind of rest or consolidation in here that holds this support and trend out here i would be looking for that next opportunity in palladium and then of course um, when i talk about gold um, i have a big bias on gold because i hold physical gold myself and oh my goodness um, every day i want to go in and 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 kiss my gold because um, look at this thing running it is remarkable 
um, to the upside here right now. So I do think it is overextended. I, that pains me to say that, holding physical gold, but I do think it's overextended and needs a rest or a pullback here, some kind of consolidation coming back here to trend. But watch carefully in here as gold and take a look at PHYS. If you want to hold some physical gold and not actually buy the actual coins, um, or gold bars, take a look at PHYS. It's inexpensive uh, for anyone to buy. A little rest or pullback in here could set up an opportunity there. And I would say the same for PSLV. If you don't want to hold paper silver like in SLV, PSLV, you can see we've got a big resistance area here in the chart. If that were to pop through, then I think there's probably some new highs that could easily come in that chart. So watch carefully on uh, some of these physical um, uh, precious metal markets as well. Of course, you have to be looking at things uh, in the miner sector when the gold and silver and, and copper is doing well. Check out the miners. Newmont Mining looking strong here. Take a look at Barry Gold. Um, showing a potential buy pattern setting up here. There's that upside trend. We broke this little downtrend here. We're holding in this pattern. Watch for that next upside opportunity in that PAAS showing lots of strength. KGC showing strength. So there is a lot going on in the mining sector. You could look at uh, GDX if you want a basket. Uh, that broke out this resistance up here showing strong in the market so an awful lot going on in that area you'll also want to be keeping an eye on things like natural gas and um, oil if the dollar falls we'll typically see oil go up we'll typically see natural gas improve in value so watch that carefully this is a massive area of resistance here on UNG so this consolidation in here that we've started yesterday it would be a very healthy thing to rest or consolidate this back um, or pull it back a little bit in that chart and then look for that next opportunity for that to potentially pop through here on UNG. So there's a lot for you to chew on here today. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here today. Patient with me with my little computer problem that I had yesterday. Y'all take care. Be safe. As always, I wish you all the best. And we'll see you right back here, bright and early Thursday morning.